All right, hello everybody, and welcome to another round of uh, LSR League Racing Action, this time here around Spa Francorchamps. Is, uh, excuse me for one sec, as I try to invite somebody once again. I uh, don't know what the error is there, but hopefully it does uh, get fixed. Uh, I'm still waiting for, I believe, a couple of cars to make their first way uh, out of the pit lane as I get rid of that echo and there is the first couple uh, I'm just gonna try to shoot off these couple of invites really quickly um, I know Fortuna if you're listening if you could show us online I'm not sure if that's an issue or not uh, that could potentially be one of the issues there but Chael is gonna be first out of the blocks But should be an interesting race here around Spa Francorchamps. Of course, one of the you know most iconic circuits on the F1 calendar. Of course, has seen some very interesting races, including that one uh, very very moist race where the fast lap was of course taken by Nikita Mazepin, uh, and somehow people got still got points. But that's not a race that we'll uh, continue to talk about uh, anymore. But here comes. Uh, but of course. You know, very long lap. We'll have 22 laps of full racing conditions. Of course, got a uh, short qualifying session first. Of course, it's going to be the Williams leading the pack uh, as of right now. It should be uh, very interesting. Of course, we got uh, had a very eventful race last time out uh, at Zandvoort. So of course, hopefully we get uh, some. Hopefully we get some more finishers than we did last weekend, uh, but should end up being a very, very interesting race. T top speeds, you know, we're going to be topping out probably at around 210 miles an hour up down the Camel Straight. It should be should be very interesting. Uh, as I'm still trying to get somebody in. But yeah, we'll see if we get uh, any more drivers, but at least starting with 13 as of right now. But we'll stay on board with Chael. Of course, short DRS run down into the turn one hairpin. Uh, should be a decent chance it overtakes down here, but of course going to get really slow. And then traction out here, really important, down the old pit straight. Of course, got some lap traffic up ahead that uh, Williams is going to have to navigate. Has to just jink another way. Um, and then of course you got Radion and O'Rouge, of course, going to be completely flat. Uh, at most points in this race, we might see lips as tire wear starts come in. Of course, down the Camel Straight, uh, of course, going to be seeing massive top speeds uh, topping uh, 210, probably approaching 220 miles an hour uh, into this little S section here. Probably best overtaking spot on the circuit. And good from Chio really early. Uh, we come into uh, this next right hander here. Going to be a bit of a challenge uh, for a number of drivers, just depending on their setup, is it's really easy to lock up just as you go up and over the hill. And big switch there from Chael uh, as he makes the run now down here as I'm still getting some stuff set up. But, of course, again, you know, just a slight lift as you come through that long left-hander. Grimray already retired from the session. Uh, that's down at uh, turn four into turn five. So I think just the Alfa Romeo getting a little bit loose uh, and is going to start from the back of the grid. Grim Ray does have a lot of pace, though, so expect him to fly up the field in the early stages. Uh, of course, got the long kind of straight here uh, down on the back side of the track. Probably the second best overtaking spot on circuit. We could see uh, some slipstream passes down here as, of course, no DRS. Uh, and into the bus stop chicane, of course, hard braking at about that 100-meter board. Uh, and, it, you know, again, really important to still get this right. Uh, out of the chicane, here he comes. Again, another twitch there for the Williams. So, uh, 141, 939. Not necessarily indicative of Chael's pace. We saw a number of twitches there. Uh, but is going to be the benchmark for everybody to chase. I believe it's one of the Aston Martins coming next. Uh, down the line, it's going to be Jordan. A little bit of a lockup there coming through the bus stop. Uh, maybe a little bit wide out of it as well. But to the line he comes. And he, he will go top as well uh, by four thousandths of a second. 
So Jordan will take provisional poles and Alpha Tauri behind him. That's going to be uh, Tolkien. Uh, not a great time there comparatively of 142-126. It's going to be uh, not the McLaren of Ozan uh, or the Mercedes of Tommy XXC. It's going to be the Red Bull uh, of Jojo next to the line. Here he comes out of the final corner. Uh, he'll go third quickest with the 141.958. Of course, jumping through a lot of the rest of the field. Let's see if uh, anybody else is on a lap. Uh, I believe Gaming James is just getting set, so we'll jump to uh, the Hass of Isis, who is also on an outlap. So we'll not jump to him either. So instead, we'll go to the Ferrari of Tano. Of course, hard on the brakes. Uh, Fortuna did have to leave the session, but here comes Tano now out of the final corner and to the line. Tano goes top of the order. Seven tenths the gap between him and Jordan early on, is excuse me, as I will try to get uh, our 14th driver back in. And of course, we have started to see some uh, some bits and pieces as M. Calmac drops 143.0. But we have started to see some bits and pieces of uh, F124 start to drop. It's definitely been uh, mixed reviews as of right now. Of course, it'll definitely. Uh, be talking a little bit about that as we continue to know more. Uh, Ozan seemingly on a good push lap, as is XXC. Actually, out on the mediums uh, is Tommy XXC, as Gwoon Jamie goes second quickest uh, with a 141.8, so a good lap there from him. Uh, this is there with a bit of a twitch as we jumped over, so it's going to be Ozan uh, and XXC as kind of first to the line now. Of course, heartbreaking as we come into the bus stop. Again, a little bit of a lockup there from the Mercedes. He's going to come out of the final corner and definitely not going to be purely indicative, but that lap time for Tommy XXC does put him ahead of M. Calmac for the moment, and that is on a set of medium compound tires. Uh, Ozan behind him goes seventh quickest. Gaming James actually now goes top of the order, and that's for Williams. It's a 141.1, so uh, Tana with some company up there at the top of the order. Really good lap from there, and is, uh, I believe that was, who was that that just finished the lap? I believe it was, uh, it was it's just Vindov's uh, going six fastest for Haas, so just waiting on one driver to now set a lap. Jumping down the order a little bit. I think most people are on in laps or in the garage. Chael coming out to start an outlap, uh, as is Alexis currently actively on an outlap. So currently two drivers on track that are going to be uh, looking to get those first laps set. Yellow flag, that's for the, uh, one of the McLarens. I believe that's for, or that is for the McLaren uh, of Ozan. As he makes his way through. You know, definitely going to be a really interesting race on the strategy front as well. You could make a soft to medium run work rather easily. But the question is going to be how much do those uh, tires hold on throughout the course of the lap. Alexis Beast actually dove into the pit lane there. So, so uh, I think saw something that he didn't uh, like that much. Of course, Jordan on that lap will stay on board with Chael for the moment, as I believe he's the furthest ahead on an outlap. lap. Uh, but a whole, a whole bunch of the drivers uh, looking to come out and get their second lap started with just under nine minutes left to go in qualifying. Yeah, there's Isis diving into the pits. So yeah, we'll stay on board with Chael as he makes his way. He's got, uh, who is that? That is Tolkien uh, and I believe Jordan behind him to keep an eye on. Of course, coming up to the bus stop, the Williams. Can he join his teammate at all? That gap right now, at about eight, setting out about eight tenths of a second. But only four thousandths to Jordan. And less than a tenth up to Jamie. Chael going to swing it wide out the bus stop. Just try and maximize that exit 
uh, on gaining an extra, uh, as much extra time as he can. And why is Thomas D in the game? He was not invited. Um, that sh he should not be in the game. So that may be a lobby reset. Of course, Chill making his way up and over the hill is going to invalidate those. So that lap time not going to be valid. Jordan coming up uh, through to that section as well. Going to utilize all the track there to the outside. And of course, up and over the hill. Important to get that braking right. No lockups there for the Aston Martin as he comes up and over the hill. Here he comes you know, down. Hard left hander now. Of course, keeps that Aston Martin nicely under control. Uh, so let me see. Can I? Yeah. All right. Of course, as he comes now down into sector three, we'll see where Jordan stands. Of course, we'll wait and see. Talkin goes third quickest, staying on board with Jordan now as he comes through the line. A little bit of a rear lock there, and then a front lock uh, coming through the bus stop. Here he comes out of the final corner. That lap time good enough for P4. So still behind Talkin, uh, but is able to overtake Jamie. Uh, why, Jonah? Uh, I didn't see what that response was for. Oh, okay, that was for, uh, Jamie, probably. Uh, but of course, here comes, uh, you know, of course, you know, Vindov's getting set up for a lap. Uh, Tommy XXC, uh, up a tenth and a half. That's a 30.0 really early on in that stint. Uh, I think we will be having a lobby reset just because we have somebody in here who shouldn't be. So, of course, Tommy XXC rather quick early here comes uh, we'll jump over to M. Kalmak as he comes up to that first timing marker uh where will he clock in he'll clock in at two tenths up uh meanwhile tano two tenths down through sector one he's in sector two and is down 6.4 so i assume just setting up for an extra lap we're gonna dive into the pits so we'll uh jump back to tommy xxc who's uh, also coming up to that second sector timing marker. Let's see where the Mercedes uh, clocks in. Of course, as he crossed the line, he's up uh, almost seven tenths now. So good lap there for Tommy XXC. Of course, he's got a rather quick blast down this back straight here. And of course, is going to have hard braking now. So where will he, he slot in? Of course, rather clean there through the bus stop, but potentially attacking that second curb a little bit too hard and running a bit more wider than he might have liked. Only good enough for P9, but still a four-tenth advantage. So lost uh, a good bit in that final sector. So we will have a quick restart after qualifying because there is somebody in here that shouldn't be. Um, 
so we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Here comes XXC uh, around the corner. But yeah, two minutes and 45 seconds left in qualifying. So I'd imagine that we're going to see uh, a lot of drivers make their way uh, out of the pits to get a, their final laps in. As here they come, uh, there's a whole bunch coming out of the pits. There's the Ferrari, when Jamie's uh, on an out lap. Jordan Tanner, uh, Tano coming out. There's a Red Bull behind him. Everybody pawing out of the pits now that we have. Two minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Of course, we'll have to wait and see what happens here. Of course, coming up over the hill. Of course, Gaming James is going to be the first to set a lap. So we'll stay on board. Tommy XXC, uh, actually Ozan is on a push lap, so we'll jump on board. He's up a tenth through two sectors. Of course, he will have a chance to get uh, an extra lap in. But of course, we'll have to wait and see as he blasts down into the bus stop. Uh, the Gaming James not going to be a factor to his lap, but out of the final corner... Here comes Ozan. Only good enough for P9, so didn't gain, lost a little bit of time in that final sector. We'll jump on board with a provisional pull sitter of Gaming James. As Ozan uh, does not think he has the ERS to get a second lap in, so we'll stay on board with the provisional pull sitter as he makes his way around the circuit here. Jamie has started uh, his qualifying lap here. And through that first sector timing marker for Gaming James, and he is slightly up, a 29.7. So Gaming James very rapid uh, in a straight line. Uh, of course, very comfortable through those other sections. Uh, Jordan, of course, coming out. We'll jump to Gawoon Jamie, see where he's at uh, as he makes his way uh, through the first sector. Of course, coming across that first sector timing marker, a 30, about a 30 flat, so rather down on the cars ahead. Shale getting out of the way uh, of that McLaren. We'll jump on board with that P1 Williams uh, of Gaming James. You know, he is rather well ahead of everybody else. Tommy XC and the M Calmax qualifyings are also over. So here he comes, and as he crossed that sector, second sector timing marker, he's lost four tenths. So Gaming James very much down as he makes his way now into sector three. Of course, here he comes through the final couple of corners and into the bus stop now. Well down. So let's see. Uh, Tano through those through that first sector was slightly down. Let's see what time he's at. Gwoon Jamie through sector two is going to run wide and invalidate that lap. But he was up three tenths at the time. Uh, it's one of the Mercedes behind him. It's a Lexus piece with a 114.0 through the first two sectors. Uh, the Aston Martin of Jordan, a 113.5. So he's comfortable there. Isis was down. So he's going to retire from the session. Uh, Jojo has invalidated, so he will not improve. So we'll jump to Tano. Uh, through that first sector, again, still down. But can we see if the Ferrari can improve that lap time at all, utilizing all the track? And he's up four tenths. So Tano absolutely flying through two sectors. But does he have the pace to unseat Gaming James? Just a couple corners to go now. Jordan will qualify third. Uh, Tolkien will actually, I believe, uh, sorry, Jordan will take that from him. Alexis will come in ninth. Chael crosses the line. He'll come third. So will it be a Ferrari and a Williams sandwich, or will it be the two cars chasing from behind? It's going to be Tano taking pole comfortably by about three tenths. So it will be Tano at the top, followed by Gaming James, Chael, Tanner, Jordan, Jamie, Isis, Jojo, Alexis, Ozan, XXC, and Calmac, Grimray, uh, and then Fortuna. 
Oops, that's the wrong button. So we'll be back uh, in hopefully just under 10 minutes time. Uh, we do have to have a quick levy restart because uh, somebody who shouldn't be in here is. Uh, and then we'll be right back.
All right, and welcome back. Sorry for that delay. Uh, just had a couple of things to deal with on the back end. Uh, definitely disappointing when that does come up. Uh, but of course, definitely glad to have it be dealt with, have it be be over with. Uh, you know, definitely is some, you know, little things here and there that pop up with people not being as interested or kind of doing some trolling as we come to the end of the game cycle uh, or just, you know, the assorted technical issues that come with being, you know, cross-platform uh, and intercontinental. Uh, but hope what we should be clean from here on out. Of course, uh, a whole bunch of drivers, all of, uh, all of our, English is hard, all of our drivers uh, getting setups and strategies set. Uh, I would be shocked if we don't see uh, almost an entirety of soft to mediums. Uh, especially with that tire reset. But an overcast day here in Spa, which is not the case for me, where it is bright, sunny, uh, and honestly quite toasty uh, in my uh, in my apartment here. But of course, just waiting for uh, that countdown and for us to jump straight to the grid. Of course, we're just waiting on here. It is Tano on pole, and he got that pole rather comfortably. Uh, of course, about three-tenths was that advantage uh, in qualifying. Of course, we were able to get Fortuna, as well as uh, an extra driver uh, who wasn't uh, able to make uh, originally, but with the delay was able to make in silent, uh, and should uh, be able to get other drivers in for next week. Of course, if you're watching an interest in racing, we definitely have a lot of uh, open seats every week now of course with it coming to the end of the game cycle and here's the countdown now as everybody gets set and ready to go and that's the end of the countdown one two three four and five lights and we're underway here in spawn it seems to be a good getaway for Tano on the inside, out of pole position. It's a good jump, but there goes the Williams right around the outside. Gaming James, an even better start on those soft compound tires, flies around the outside of the Ferrari and takes the lead into turn one as they now blast down into uh, Eau Rouge and Radion. It's a four-tenth gap behind, but Tano opting for the hards immediately, you can tell, as they came by that camera. So Gaming James taking big advantage. Here comes the other Williams of Chael. There's... Will Tano drop two places in as many corners? He's still side by side as we take a look at the potential race strategy. Side by side behind between the Williams and the Ferrari. And it's Chael who's going to take come out ahead. So Gaming James and Chael with early jumps here. A little bit of a twitch on that Williams who's going to go defensive down into turn number six. So Tano got to go wide. But Gaming James takes the lead and now has a bit of a rear gunner uh, in Chael to potentially try and make a bit of a bit breakaway. We're taking a look at that race strategy. We're probably looking at soft to medium or medium to hard across a lot of the field, though a lot of drivers opting for hards off the start. Uh, hard's definitely the most common tire choice. Tano, Tolkien, Jordan, Jojo all opting for that compound, uh, as well as Silent and XXC a bit further down the order, uh, as well as Alexis. Uh, only two soft tire runners in M. Kelmack and Gaming James just looking to be uh, as aggressive as possible here in the early laps with those they will have to come in around lap 9 or 10 because uh, those soft tires will fall off rather quickly once we get to that point, especially compared to those medium and hard tire runners. Uh, so what to see is Tano going very deep there into the bus stop chicane. And I think a little bit of contact rejoining there with Tolkien, uh, who's actually going to put him under pressure now. So Tano struggling here early uh, in these cooler conditions, getting those hards up to temperature. Big lockup, big mistake there in the bus stop is going to mean that he drops to about a second back of Chael. Uh, meanwhile, up at the front, Gaming James made a bit of a getaway. Yellow flag in sector one. That was the Aston of uh, Fortuna, uh, I think, going a little bit deep. I think Silent was involved as well uh, down into turn one, so potentially going side by side uh, and a bit of a spin there. Tano closing up a little bit on Chael with that gap up the front, a second and a half. Uh, Jordan looking down the inside of Tolkien as they make their way through turns, uh, what is that, four, five, and six, and it's going to be Aston Martin coming out of front as out in front as they make their way through. 
you know, a bit further behind Jojo right on the tail of this pack, and a whole bunch of drivers really close. Is is looking to almost weasel his way up the inside. Ozan, meanwhile, and Alexis Beast battling side by here, side here as we make their way into the middle sector. Here comes him, Kalmac, uh, and Grimray as well. Grimray going to be boxed in, though, uh, as they make their way into Puon, but he's going to go around the outside. Oh, Mem Kalmac with a bit of a slide on the way in, a bit of a lockup, and uh, Grimray up into P10. You know, at the front of this field, coming to the end of Sector 2, that gap at 1.2 seconds, Tano with a bit of a slide there. So again, I think just that Ferrari not lighting up those hard tires the way that Tano might have uh, expected them to, though that gap still very manageable. It's sitting at about 7 tenths at the moment. So well within DRS range, and of course DRS going to be activated on this lap. Only two DRS zones, but a very, very, but the, that one on the Camel Straight, very, very powerful. But the gap up the front, 1.3 seconds. So Gaming James making a bit of a getaway. Uh, that fast lap going to fall to Tano at the moment with a 145.0, but I expect that to fall rather quickly. A uh, bit of a lockup there from Chael, as you can see. Uh, from that flash of white smoke as they come down the hill uh, into Radion and Rouge again. That gap sitting at about six tenths at the moment between the Ferrari and the Williams. As they come up onto the Camel Straight, that DRS going to open up now for Tano. Is he going to be able to close up enough? Gap at six tenths and closing. But Chael dumping, I think, a lot of ERS there to keep Tano behind and is going to hold him behind. So, you know, Tano only gaining about two tenths there. So Chael seemingly uh, blisteringly quick in a straight line uh, and may operate in that rear gunner in that gunner ro bleh, tail gunner roll very nicely if he can hold up Tano for long enough of course Gaming James with that 1.7 second advantage Silent finds his way past Tommy XXC there in the middle sector so a good move there from the McLaren as he tries to uh, make a bit of a recovery drive. Grimray as well finds a way past Ozan, uh, very similar to the way we saw him take uh, M. Kalmak just a lap ago. He's going to go around the outside, and M. Kalmak is going to go past Ozan as well. Uh, is there any damage on that McLaren? It doesn't appear to be uh, why, why he's dropping back. Potentially uh, just a bit of a mistake through Puon and recovering it. Grimray, though, actually going to get a five-second penalty for corner-cutting and gaining a position. So I think he went off track at Puon. But is just going to take that five-second penalty and carry on with his race, uh, try and make a bit of a breakaway from the cars behind him. So a bit of a mistake there from the Alfa Romeo. And, of course, that lap that is going to have to be served in the pit lane. And Kelmack, of course, closing very rapidly. So a lot of straight-line speed in that Alpine. But, of course, we'll have to see how that continues. Uh, of course, start of lap number four. Still Gaming James leading the way. Tommy XC, five-second penalty due to corner cutting. Uh, of course, I think that will go to review. But I think that might have been due to a potential incident with Fortuna, but they got two seconds up at the front. Uh, Chael still managing to hold Tano behind for the moment. Uh, of course, as they come up over the hill, that got still at about seven tenths. So Chael, very comfortable on those medium compound tires at the moment. Uh, but Gaming James ahead, not managing to make a massive getaway. He's only increased that gap by about two tenths as Ozan makes his way past them, Kelmac. Uh, but yeah, Gaming James, you know, Pulling a tenth or two away from his teammate behind. Uh, but I think Chael just trying to maybe, you know, play a bit more of a team game. Try and hold on to those tires a little bit. He's very quick in a straight line. Yellow flag. Sector one. That is for Tommy XXC. He is out. Uh, and that is going to bring out the first safety car of the race. Uh, Tommy XXC. Uh, that's, I believe, at turn six. Where it's very easy to just run a little bit wide. Lose that back end if you carry that little bit too much speed. And Tommy XXC is our first DNF of the race, and that's going to bring out the safety car. So it will be very interesting to see strategy decisions here. I'd imagine if you're gaming James, you have to make the decision to pit here off of those softs. They, certain, they were definitely still in that competitive window early on, uh, but especially if we may remain green for the rest of this race... Hard tires might be the uh, might be the answer there, and so we'll have to see. Uh, I imagine he's going to try and take off now, and of course he is going to dive into the pits. His teammate uh, actually going to follow him in, so Chael dives into the pits, which means Tano will lead. So the front two pits, there's the Hass of Vindov's behind. Uh, Grimray will dive into the pits. He'll serve that five second as his Ozan. And M. Kalmak, uh, Fortuna as well, will not follow them in. 
So Fortuna will box. So what will the leader go to? He's actually going to go to medium tires. So fresh mediums for your leader. Chael behind him, his teammate, will go to hards. Uh, he is going to get jumped by Jordan, who had a uh, much better stop by virtue of not uh, having to double stack there. Uh, Fortuna actually going to slot in behind Gaming James. Gaming James managing to beat him out of the pits, I believe. We'll have to see. Is he getting... Is he going to be able to overtake? No, he will not. So, for, so uh, Gaming James hustles it out of the pit lane and manages to gain himself a position and put uh, a car in between him and Jordan behind. Of course, his teammate of Chael opting for hearts. This is Vindov's opting for hearts. And then Kelmac opting for hearts. So we could see them potentially go to the end of the race on this tire compound. Meanwhile, Ozane going for mediums and Grimray going for stops. Both drivers looking to make that two-stop work. Of course, there definitely have been pit stops. We'll take a chance to look at positions gained and lost as of right now. Fortuna, currently the big one, up six, but of course still has uh, a pit stop to go. Gaming James, down four, still with the pit stop to go, as is Chael. Uh, Silent, up nine. Again, same thing. Uh, Grimray and, and Kalmak, only down one, as, Ozan, as is Ozan, only down two. So definitely two drivers to keep an eye on throughout the rest of this race. Uh, but it's definitely going to be an interesting rest of the strategy battle as there is your pit stop count as of the moment. Uh, of course, first to fifth, and then Fortuna all electing to stay out under this first safety car. So we'll have to see uh, when everybody decides to pit a second time. And of course, we'll have to wait and see there. Fortuna actually going to dive into the pits here. So he's going to take a fresh set and will be on that newest set of tires. Uh, but of course, that will release Jordan to go after Gaming James. But should be just one more lap under safety car here. I'll swap back over to our tire map. But yeah, definitely going to be interesting to see, uh, especially what Chael and Vindobs do over the rest of this race. Uh, as will, will be for Fortuna, I think Mkelmak definitely has uh, some pace to make some noise. Uh, but I don't know if he has the pace uh, of those other drivers, uh, at least based on Group 2. Uh, as well as some others. But yeah, definitely keep an eye on some of them. Of course, uh, Grimray, Ozan, Gaming James, and Jordan all going to need, uh, all going to likely need, I should say, uh, an extra stop in order to get to the end of this race. We'll have to wait and see how this pans out. I know uh, another thing about Spa is it's probably one of the most interesting uh, safety car restarts that we'll see on the calendar. As Tommy X to see does end up leaving the session, but yeah, it should be an interesting research just because of how long that final sector is. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see how Tano takes this. Uh, I know in group two earlier today, uh, which was won by Kendricks, uh, by virtue of yours truly uh, screwing up and getting uh, an extra three second penalty on the final lap and handing the win uh, to uh, the men from Canada, uh, but just depending on how long you hold back for, that restart can be very, very powerful. Of course, uh, Tano keeping it nice and slow for right now. I think just dragging those brakes to try and keep core temperature in those tires. The question is, how early do you go? 
Do you hold back, let everybody's tires get cool before that final chicane, or do you take off before it, try and catch somebody napping? Uh, as Tano actually starting to pick up that pace a little, just maybe a touch, as that safety car does pull into the pit lane. So Tano keeping a rather quick pace. Tolkien keeping rather close, though. I think jo uh, Tano is going to leave it to the exit of that chicane uh, as we are ready to go back racing. So Tano does have control of the field. Here we go through the bus stop. Going to keep it slow. Swing it wide and is going to take off. And Tolkien actually got boxed in. Jojo, I think, making a little bit of a tap on the rear. And that's a great restart for Tano here on lap number seven. Uh, as that gap already up to nine tenths. There's the Williams uh, of Gaming James looking to go down the inside of Silent. Uh, is he going to be able to make that move done by the time we get into Radion and O'Rouge? I think he's going to dump ERS, and he is going to get that done, but it might be side-by-side -side behind. No, um, Jordan also managed to find a way past Silent, uh, who is going to fall in line. Meanwhile, up towards the front, six-tenths the gap uh, as we come down the Kemmel Strait. Alexis Beast closing in within a tenth and a half of JoJo is that closest fight in the top three. Shale gets past Silent as well as they come down. Goes a little bit deep on the brakes and actually goes into the back of the Aston Martin, but a good hold from both drivers, as well as from Silent behind, to keep uh, out of the way of that. Uh, but, you know, Silent falling down the order rather quickly in that McLaren, uh, of course, is going to be first to fight everybody else behind. Uh, but Tano with a bit of a breakaway now uh, at about half a second. Of course, we come through, pull on a big slide there from Tano. So yeah, potentially that Ferrari just not liking those hard compound tires. And of course, uh, for everybody who stayed on those hard compound tires, a fresh set of softs is probably uh, in the running now, uh, especially if they got to extend that hard tire stint. A little bit of a twitch there. Alexis Beast uh, and Gaming James battling side by side through that final sector. Gaming James, absolutely rapid here. He's closing quickly on that Mercedes. He's going to look currently to the outside and go back to the inside. Grimray uh, is going to retire from the session. Uh, that car was still in the race, so it shouldn't be a safety car. Side by side still with Alexis Beast and Gaming James. Who's going to be braver on the brakes? It's about the same time, so who's going to have the advantage as they bang wheels? Getting a little bit hard, G-Bargy, as they're still side by side through the bus stop. And I think Gaming James comes out with the advantage. Jordan gets Alexis as well, uh, as his line was compromised. So some Definitely hard battling there. Chael looking down the inside of Alexis now as well. And I think he's going to get that done. Uh, I think Silent into the back of Ozan there who got who got turned. So definitely uh, going to be disappointing there. And hopefully he can get back in this race. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Silent has damage. But here comes Tolkien. It's two, in, two wide in front. Th uh, almost three wide behind for a second. Gaming James with the advantage. He's going to cover off. Jordan as they both get past Jojo and as they come into the S's it's Tolkien in the lead it's Gaming James already up in the third and Jordan just following the pack continuing to pick off more and more drivers Shale meanwhile looks down the inside of Jojo a very tough to get an overtake gun cleanly there at turn number seven Gaming James meanwhile with a big move on Tano so those fresh mediums uh, seemingly the absolute right choice here as that Williams of Gaming James absolutely rapid here uh, in the early stages. Tolkien managing to make a bit of a getaway. And of course, Tano, I think, right now more in race management mode than anything. Just trying to take those hards uh, and get the most possible out of them. Big twitch there from Jojo. He's going to lose the back end. Here comes Alexis with pace. He's going to look now down the inside of the Red Bull. Uh, he and Iss is going to find a way through. Is a big mistake. Definitely... Uh, smart, the, you know, great driving from both of them to get out of the way. Uh, of course, as they come down to the bus stop, will the, for the lead, uh, Tano defending the inside almost two by two. A bit of a lockup there from the Williams of Gaming James looking to get that moved on. Jordan in third, knows the tail and very tight, and it's going to be DRS activated now. So, of course, not going to be down the pit straight. Is anybody going to take a look to the inside? There's Chael looking to make a move. He's going to go down the inside of Tano and into the back of the Aston of Jordan. I think he's going to make a little bit of contact there as Tano, with, as well with Tano, but seemingly all good. And as they run down the hill, uh, it's five cars on the line now. A bit of a breakaway from Alexis and Isis Vindovs uh, as their three nose to tail. Uh, and of course, both cars behind Alexis now going to have DRS. They're three wide for the lead. Jordan looking down the outside. Gaming James takes the lead as they come down into turn number four. It's the Williams taking the lead from the Aston Martin and everybody else filing in uh, with the uh, other Williams of Chael managed to find a move. Alexis able to stay ahead of Jojo as well as Isis got a really good jump there. Uh, and, you know, everybody else. 
kind of filing in, but is, this could be the chance for Gaming James and Jordan to start to make a bit of a breakaway on those fresh medium compound tires. Oh, and a big, yeah, very wide there from Chael, uh, as I think just didn't scrub off enough speed, going there into Puan, and is going to lose that position. Of course, Tano, who led uh, a good, who led uh, a couple of laps of the race there, is sitting down at fifth, and is still in this fight, but certainly those two at the front definitely have the advantage as of the moment but likely with another stop to go. Of course, hard breaking that gap at about two tenths between the leaders. I just realized I was on Tolkien while checking this. We were just trying to see what happened to Grimray, and it seems that Grimray's uh, steering wheel uh, disconnected there. So that was the reason behind his crash. Uh, so we just uh, ended up DCing because he couldn't uh, didn't know how to figure out that tech issue. So definitely... Uh, disappointing to see for the Alfa Romeo, uh, but that does leave us with 12 drivers. But once again, here comes a battle for the lead, and they've now made a bit of a breakaway at 1.1 seconds. The Aston Martin all over the back of the Williams. Jordan wants to get this move done as soon as possible. Uh, Gaming James going to defend the inside. Here comes Jordan around the outside. Still going to be side by side, but the Williams going to have to tuck into the slipstream of the Aston Martin by the time they get into turn four. Uh, it's Jordan up into the lead. Chael as well managed to find a way up into third after that uh, mistake earlier in the lap. Managed to get past Tolkien using those fresh medium compound tires. And Isses as well has managed to close up rather nicely to this battle. So the pit window for fresh softs to the end of the race uh, is going to be at about nine to go as Jordan receives a three second time penalty there through Puan for multiple warnings. And that's probably the most likely place we'll see time penalties throughout the remainder uh, of this race. Uh, as if you don't really break there through Puan, you're really trusting uh, the tires to hold on to you there instead of the brakes to get you stopped uh, as you just get a little bit of engine braking and then just try and gun it as soon as possible. Uh, and that can lead to you racking up three warnings rather easily. Uh, Fortuna, as well as managed to make his way up into seventh and is leading a train that includes Jojo, Alexis Beast, and Kelmack and Silent. Uh, of course, as they come now down into the bus stop, Shale managing to close up nicely, and he could tow everybody else a little bit of a twitch there from Jordan. So potentially struggling a little bit, uh, Jordan already on those mediums. Are they starting to fall away, especially compared to Shale, who currently sits third and is within DRS range of the two leaders and is pulled Talcon and Tano right along with him. It's going to depend on this exit if it can now be a three-car breakaway instead of a four. And I think it, that Shale is going to manage to pull a little bit away from Talcon uh, as they make their way into Radion and Eau Rouge. That gap at about 1.1 seconds. Uh, and of course, as they come over, uh, it's going to be the Williams with DRS open. It's going to be another Williams taking the lead, though. It's getting James back up into the lead. Tano, meanwhile, I think finding a way past Tolkien, who I think just with without having that DRS advantage just lost too much time there. And is going to fall back, so now it's going to be a question of can Isis close up that gap to Chael? Of course, uh, both of uh, both the Haas and the, the uh, we'll call him the second Williams driver as of the moment, just based on position, uh, on tires that are the same laps old, so it's going to come down to setup now. So we'll have to wait and see. Is that gap both between Chael and Isis uh, and uh, Chael to Jordan sitting at about the same uh, point at just hovering at about that one second mark and of course as uh, we'll be at that halfway mark at the end of this lap it's a four tenth gap for the lead uh, I think a bit of a twitch for Chael behind it seemed as he lost a good chunk of time that's going to allow Isis to close up and so this is going to be a very interesting end of the race as we continue to approach that pit stop window so when will uh, we'll likely see uh, Tano and Tolkien be first into the pits uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what tire choice they go for. It's a big lockup there for Game James. That was a uh, big front right lockup as well as a little bit of rear. And under the power, just really struggling to get that power down. Here comes Jordan. He's going to look down the inside with DRS assistance. He's going to hold back for the moment, though. Look to try and get it, get him again as they make their way through uh, Radion and Eau Rouge and onto the Kemmel Street for the gap. Two-tenths of a second. Chael has fallen off this pack a little bit, so those hards potentially not 
uh, feeling themselves. But as they come up over the hill, the gap at about a tenth and a half. And this should be a rather easy move for Jordan, but who, of course, has that three-second time penalty. He's going to look right around the outside. And the, Has or the Aston and the Williams swap places once more. Here comes the Hasp on the Williams, though. Red light flashing for Vindovs. Uh, not going to manage to get away, find a way through. I think a little bit of contact there between Chael and Isses, though. But no seeming damage on either car as of the moment. And of course, this is great for Tano because on those much older, on those uh, older tires, isn't he? You know, the Ferrari isn't going to have as much pace, but he can stick with these drivers. Uh, that'll open up the possibility for that undercut. Uh, as of course they run down the hill through Puon. But yeah, that'll allow the Ferrari. Uh, that potential chance to get a massive undercut depending on what tires he goes for. And I'd imagine all of these top six drivers going to be looking to go to softs to finish the race. Uh, of course, Chael and Isis and even Fortuna, three seconds back of this kind of of this big fight is Alexis uh, is next to receive a three second time penalty. Uh, but yeah, driver Chael, Isis, uh, Fortuna all could definitely go to the end of this race. So that current live battle for P3 could be the most interesting one, could end up being the one for the win, depending on how the rest of this race pans out. Heartbreaking for Jordan into the bus stop. They kept 2.3 seconds as they've actually pulled a bit of a gap away from Chael. There's a couple of lockups behind as Chael defending uh, pretty heavily from these four drivers behind, all of whom elect to stay out. And so I definitely keep an eye on Tano and Tolkien to box this lap, as we're now probably, uh, I would believe, we're right in that pit window for the soft compound tires. As uh, at the end of this lap, it will be nine to go, which is right where you want to be for that soft tire. Uh, also trying to check like, up at the front. DRS once again open for Gaming James. He's going to look to the outside, and once again, it's a lead change around the outside on the Kemmel straight. Gaming James retakes that lead here on lap 13, and everybody looking to make a bit of a breakaway. Tano, uh, I think with a big mistake there, uh, potentially just tried to look around the outside, but nothing quite there. Uh, is going to lose a position to Isis after trying to find one, find uh, a way past Shale. Looks to try and get that move redone, but not quite able to make it work. So Shale now with a chance to find a bit of a breakaway, have a little bit more, uh, a little bit cleaner air. Uh, let, not as much in front, but certainly behind. As he makes his way through that middle of sector two. Of course, Fortuna definitely uh, run, running a bit of a train of his own at the moment. Silent right behind him, as is Jojo. Uh, Alexis Beast has started to fall off of this pack a little bit. So I'd imagine we'll see Alexis and Jojo join Tano and Tolkien uh, as they dive into the pits here in the next lap or two. Of course, here they come now. Slipstream is a pretty good advantage, I believe, uh, in the code. It's about 10 or 15% drag reduction. He's going to look to the outside in the bus stop, though, is going to back off. Let Isis dive into the pits. Is this going to be uh, the Ferrari? It is going to be the Ferrari diving into the pits. So Tano, the first to make a green flag pit stop here on lap number 14, is going to get that slowed down. Jojo going to follow him. Alexis Beast opts to stay out as well. So we'll jump on board with Tano. Uh, I believe those are medium compound tires. They are going on to the Ferrari. So mediums for Tano. Jojo opts for medium tires as well. Ozan also going to dive into the pits. I assume that's going to be for Softs trying to maybe snick a fastest lap point. Meanwhile, Gaming James has made a bit of a getaway from Jordan, so perhaps a bit of a mistake through turn one is going to mean that we're not going to see a lead change here on lap number 14. As Gaming James holds on to that lane. Of course, Tano coming through right on No Rouge. Now, big mistake there for the Aston Martin. That was a big slide for Jordan, who just about manages to keep that Aston Martin out of the wall. Those medium tires starting to seemingly... Uh, be past their limit on his car, and that's going to allow Gaming James a bit of a breakaway now. Of course, is his towing Tolkien Fortuna managing is starting to close up just a little bit to all of these drivers up ahead, and of course, is pulling Silent and Alexis Beast uh, along with him. Uh, of course, their race, uh, Silent and uh, Alexis, their race probably with Jojo at the moment. Of course, they're going to have the advantage of DRS as of right now. Tano making his way through Puon. So we'll have to see. Will the leaders elect to pit now? Try and minimize Tano's uh, undercut advantage? Or is the game plan instead to try and run long on these mediums 
try and extend another lap or two and then look for soft till the end. A bit of a drift there for the leader. Who's going to dive into the pits? Gaming James going to dive into the pits. Jordan elects to stay out. Chael stays out. Of course, not wanting to double stack with his teammate. Here comes Isis into the pits. He's going to dive in as well. Tolkien, Silent elects to stay out, as does Fortuna. Uh, and Kelmac stays out. Alexis Beast dive in, dives into the pits. So we'll have to see. The big question is going to be, where does Tano come out in relation to Gaming James, uh, who opts for the soft compound tire? Here comes the Ferrari out the final couple of corners. Gaming James, meanwhile, making his way through turn one and minimizing that undercut. Has done wonders for Gaming James uh, as Tano uh, rather far adrift. And Gaming James, of course, now with the, with the soft tire advantage. Uh, Vindov's as well coming out of the pits. Uh, he's going to stay ahead of Tano as well. So that DRS, uh, actually, no, he's not going to come out ahead of Tano. He's about two and a half seconds back. So that undercut working for the Ferrari, uh, at least on Issa's Vindovs, and gets a good jump for right now. Uh, Silent has managed to close up to the back of Fortuna, who again could be going to the end of this race. Though based on how some of how this tire wear has seemed to start to pan out, might not be the best option uh, as, give me one second, uh, he is uh, five minus, he's about only nine seconds ahead of gaming James. Uh, so that potentially not being the strategy to go for. So not a lot, of, not loads of time lost in the pit lane. Of course, it is a 50 mile an hour speed limit and you get a little shorter line through turn one and get about the full run down the Camel Straight to get uh, back up to racing speeds. But lap number 15, Jordan now with a two second advantage over Chael. He needs that to be at about three. Actually, he needs that to be at about three for position. But the big question here is where he'll come out in relation to game James. I wouldn't be shocked. See the Aston Martin dive into the pits here. He is going to hold to that right-hand side, and Jordan likely to dive into the pits for a set of softs. Chael elects to stay out. Uh, will Fortuna do the same? Fortuna will stay out. Silent dives into the pits. What will M. Kalmak do? Will he still be in the way for Gaming James? Yes, he will. We'll see how long the Alpine manages to hold them off. Uh, so he'll cross the line and start in the podium positions. But just three drivers now for Gaming James to try and uh, get past Tano. Sets a new fast lap of the race at 144.2. So Tano uh, absolutely flying as of right now. He's actually going to get the jump on Jordan as well, uh, who opted for medium compound tires. So he doesn't think softs uh, are going to be his best option to the end of the race. RR Silent, meanwhile, Oscar softs. Ozan sets a new fastest lap of the race. And Chael with a 3.7 second advantage back to Fortuna. Uh, Gaming James, meanwhile, able to comfortably handle on Kalmak, who I think had a mistake likely through Radion or Eau Rouge. Uh, so he lost a load of time. Uh, and Gaming James now released 10 seconds back of the lead with, uh, I believe, that's seven to go. Uh, of course, counting this lap. So it'll be six to go next time we cross the line, since you have to do that fun. Uh, add one uh, when subtracting. So I think the big question now is not uh, if Chael and Fortuna can hold off Gaming James, but when they'll be forced to as Tano makes his way past and Kelmac. I believe that was through Puan as well. Uh, so a great move there from the Ferrari to find a way through. As he's gained another position. So definitely another driver to keep an eye on is going to be Tano uh, because those softs are going to start to degrade rather quickly. Are they going to degrade to about three seconds over the course of this last stint? I don't think so. As yellow flag, that's going to be Ozan out of the session, and that's going to actually bring out the safety car, which is great news from Chael, who dives into the pits. Fortuna going to follow in. Gaming James coming out of the final couple of corners, and that's perfect timing. He'll dive into the pits. Tano, what will he elect to do? Tano will pit. M. Kalmak will pit. Jordan stays out. Uh, out. This is goes in. Jojo goes in. Tolkien goes in. Silent stays out. Uh, what will Alexis do? Of course, is he'll have a free choice. He'll box as well. So it's going to be shuffling the order here with just a couple laps to go. And it's going to be actually Chael coming out with the lead still ahead of Jordan with that quick stop. Silent going to come out uh, behind Fortuna. As they're going to race on the pit lane, it is going to be Fortuna holding on to P3. Tano drops to six, but of course gets a fresh set of soft compound tires, as will everybody else. So a big shakeup here with just a couple laps to go as Ozan out of the race.
Whew. And now I need to get my mouth a break because it is 80 degrees in my apartment, which uh, if you don't talk moon units, I will look up the conversion for you. Um, yeah, it's currently about 80 degrees in my apartment, which is great for April because I'm super used to it. Uh, which, yeah, if you don't speak in freedom units, is 27. Um, so rather toasty uh, up in here, but we soldier on nonetheless. But yeah, if anybody that if this is bad news for anybody, I'd have to say it's more for Jordan and Alexis, of course, with them having uh, three second time penalties each. Of course, it's going to be really interesting to see how they elect to try and finish the race. But of course, Soft's probably going to be the way to go until the end. Of course, now with everybody on an even set of tires, I definitely imagine that Tano and Game James probably going to be the biggest threats. Uh, but of course, we'll have to see in uh, full-on race race trim how they can manage to make it work. As we will have one more lap under safety car, so that means when getting back underway, it'll be four to go. So two laps without DRS, two laps with it. And so if anybody at home is calculating everybody's chances, definitely be sure to keep that in mind uh, as we come up to the end of this race. Because being led by the Aston Martin safety car. Ah, stretching out my mouth a little bit, but uh, of course I see six of you in chat as of the moment. Uh, of course, if you're new to LSR, definitely be sure to, uh, and you're interested in potentially the league racing in the future, definitely be sure to let us know. We'd be happy to get you set up with an invite link for either Formula One, uh, whether it's the remainder of the 23 season, as there's, uh, if you're on PlayStation, you of course could get it for free last month. And if you did and are looking for some league racing to do, definitely be happy to have you, as well as F124 if you're looking to get that. Of course, we see mixed reviews on right now, or some people saying that it's just going to be uh, a 23 reskin with 22's handling. Uh, but I've had a couple of people tell me that that's a bit of an overreaction as well, and that there's some uh, rather, that, you know, it's a much more uh, simulator type feeling, uh, as opposed to the more sim, you know, they leaned a little bit more to simulator, is what I've heard from a couple of other people, as opposed to Simkady. A bit of a break there from Shale. I don't think that was a break check, but might have just been. Uh, a bit of a lockup there from the Williams. It's very easy to do that down at turn at number six, but seemingly no harm, no foul. Uh, we also have GT7. So we also have Gran Turismo 7 leagues if you're interested uh, in taking part in that. Of course, we both have uh, a multi-class race there, uh, as well as uh, a pure GT3. Uh, the multi-class right now is uh, largely uh, Group 3 in the TS0020. Uh, uh, from group one, if I remember my groupings right. But, uh, yeah, so if you're, any of that uh, is something that you might be interested in, definitely feel free to throw that in the chat and definitely go down. Uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, I'd ask that you please hit that like button. Uh, it's very helpful. Uh, if not for the channel, then please do it for my ego, as I really appreciate that. Um, as I try not to let my ego get the best of me, but it is so certainly a thing and it guides me more often than it should so thank you in advance of course we're looking to get back underway now and it is going to be chill leading the way here and of course managed to time that safety car perfectly came out at the perfect time for him to neutralize that race and meant everybody was diving into the pit lane behind him it'll be four to go when we cross the line when will the williams elect to gun it Picking up the speed, and here we go, back to green flag conditions as soon as we cross the start-finish line. It's a good jump from Chael ahead of Jordan. It's actually Fortuna who didn't get a great jump there, uh, as well as Silent, who's got Gaming James uh, all over his rear wing. But as we hit the restart, uh, it's about a one-second gap from Jordan behind. Fortuna, two-thirds back. Gaming James was all over the back of Silent uh, as they make their way into turn number one. But Jordan looking to absolutely take off here early is JoJo three-second time penalty. I think running wide there at turn one, potentially going side-by-side side with somebody. 
uh, just having to try and recover the car. Here comes Gaming James on silent. He's going to look to the outside immediately. Uh, they're going to go side by side down the Kemmel straight. Of course, got the Aston Martins ahead of them. Going to be very tight. Gaming James with a nose ahead. Who's going to have the advantage as they make their way to turn one? It's very deep from Gaming James. It's going to allow Silent to come back around the outside. And it's going to be the McLaren ending up coming away with it. Uh, with a cleaner exit there. He is going to go defensive there. Now down to turn, uh, into turn number, I believe, seven. Uh, but Gaming James is going to try to stick it around the outside. Or stick it down the inside. He's going to hold on to it. And he's up into fourth place. Of course, they run through Puan Chael, absolutely taking off here early on. That gap up to two seconds already. Fortuna managed to find a way past his teammates, who now has the chance to try and go chasing after Chael uh, with about three and a half laps. laps. L English is hard. Laps to go now. Uh, and, of course, coming into the start of Sector 3, that gap sitting at about 1.8 seconds. So how much uh, ERS is Chael burning here in these early phases as that gap? Closing now uh, down about uh, a tenth as they make their way down this back straight here. Uh, and we'll see how much Jordan can hold off everybody behind him. Of course, uh, JoJo and Alexis going to be battling for that final point scoring position. Uh, that gap very tight. Tano manages to find a way past Silent into the bus stop. Is going to uh, hold the inside through that second part. And Chael going to set a new fast lap of the race of 142.8. For that gap behind, sitting at about 1.7 seconds, so still lots of work left to be done. Uh, and Gaming James and Tano, of course, going to be charging uh, to try and get those positions back. This is as well now released to go after Silent. Of course, Jordan got James behind him, and uh, the Williams pokes out to the outside once again, side by side between the Williams and the Aston Martin, just like we saw a lap ago. With Gaming James. Once again, poking the nose ahead, but this time manages to keep that Williams under control and scythes his way up into third. That's what he, or what he meant to get done with Silent just a lap ago and gets it done much cleaner this time around. A great move there from Gaming James here on lap number 20, uh, looking to try and chase down and retake uh, that win from his teammate. So, of course, Tano now has to deal with those, with the Aston Martin of Jordan coming through Puan now. Of course, we saw Gaming James get that move made it in Sector 1, and then Tano find a way past in the bus stop. Are we likely to see that again? Seems to be a much better exit for the Ferrari, so uh, we'll have to see as they come past this camera here. Very tight, and Kalmak with a three-second time penalty, so that battle now for ninth. Very interesting, but of course, uh, as they come now down this back straight, it's a bit of a breakaway of 1.6 seconds for the Aston Martin out in front. Gaming James, meanwhile, closing on Fortuna, as is Tano on silent. So right on the gearbox is the Williams. He's going to look around the outside of turn one. The Aston going to defend, and they're going to hold behind Tano. Meanwhile, looking to go down the inside of the Aston of Jordan. They're going to bang wheels a little bit, and they're still going to remain side by side as DRS now enabled. Yes, uh, this other Aston of Fortuna going to defend pretty heavily. Uh, I'm going to look for DRS. Tano, no, looking around the outside, and it's going to be Gaming James taking the advantage and taking the lead as Fortuna went a little bit deep, but does he have the pace to stay ahead without DRS advantage? We'll have to see as they come through Radion and Eau Rouge, the Aston right on the gearbox of the Williams, and it's, an, it's the Aston's on the hunt, a little trip through the grass for Gaming James. DRS wide open for Fortuna and for Jordan. Are they both going to find a way through into turn number four as they come past the camera? Yes, they will. Gaming James going to have to take to the runoff area, and he's going to drop down to fourth, potentially further. He'll drop down to fifth. Bad exit, though, from Jordan, who's which is going to allow Tano to move up into third. And, of course, Isis and Silent there as well. Isis now side by side with Gaming James, and he's going to take the outside down through there and contact between Gaming James, who's going to fall down it down into eighth. JoJo is going to retire from the session. So JoJo out of the race. No more safety car as under two laps left to go. And now Tano up, in, up into third. Fortuna is in second place. So can it be the Ferrari now to have a chance at making a run? Oh, big twitch there from Isis. Isis with a massive twitch. Almost catching Silent up. Silent, meanwhile, goes up into fifth. Here comes Tolkien as well. Going to look, try to find a way past the Haas. Uh, of course, uh, Iss is out of ERS. So as they come through the hill, come through, uh, Iss is going to get up into seventh. And, of course, starting the last lap, Chael with a two-second advantage. So just has to manage the rest of this race now to try and win. Meanwhile, behind, it's Tano in an Aston Martin sandwich. 
But of course, DRS, who are both cars behind, uh, behind Fortuna, who's going to take his time, making his way through turn one. Jordan going to look to try and get both. Is it going to be a little bit of DRS chicken going on? And potentially a little bit of team strategy there as Tano and Fortuna going to go side by side through Radion and Oruj and Tano going to have to back out there. So potentially a big play there from Fortuna who's now going to have the DRS advantage uh, as, as Jordan goes very defensive. And of course as they come up the hill, Tano going to slide back into line and it's going to be uh, just as they went in went through turn one it's gonna be Fortuna from Tano but still lots of racing left to go big slide there from the from Fortuna as he makes his way Tano gonna look around the outside they're wheel to wheel as they make their way here through turn number seven but uh, Fortuna still managing to defend for the moment and now they're running now they'll run down the hill into Puon we've seen Tano make moves here before can he get one done no not quite that dirty air just not quite enough but still very very tight and this is all great news for Chael, who has managed to uh, kind of run away with this now, will of course stick with this fight as it's going to come down to the wire. But Chael almost certainly has this secured. For one breaking zone left to go. Can Tano get it done? I think Fortuna using a last warning there, and it's a red light flashing at the back of Tano's car. There's Chael managing to pull a bit of a gap. Three and a half tenths behind. It's two. T it's two seconds out in front. Here comes the Williams into the final breaking zone. Just two corners left to go, and one traction zone to uh, manage to come home to win. And it will be Chael winning for Williams. It's P1 at Spa. It's going to be Fortuna coming home in second, followed by Tano in third. Tolkien will come in fourth uh, after penalties are applied, followed by Silent. Jordan will finish sixth. This is in seventh. And Calmac, Alexis, and after that late incident, Gaden James uh, finishes in tenth. So, of course, uh, definitely a, a very interesting race. And, of course, some battles all coming down to the wire, and that's part of the beauty of Spas. There's only 22 laps. you got to get them done. But, of course, congratulations to Chael uh, finishing at the top of the pack. Our Silent. Uh, manages to get driver of the day. So, so definitely good to see there. Uh, but yeah, it will be uh, Williams on top. Of course, we saw Russell qualify P2, but here in LSR, it's a Williams on the top step. And it's definitely great to see. But yeah, it is Chael taking max points. Win fastest lap. Fortuna with a great drive to finish in second. Tano in third, followed by Talkin' Silent. Uh, Jordan, this is M. Calmack, Alexis, Gaming James, Jojo, Ozan, Grimray, and Tommy XTC as the DNFs. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, of course, we'll have to see you next week and hopefully on the track at some point in the future. And I will see you next time. Have a good one. That is the wrong button. I keep pressing the wrong button to end stream. God.